Hello, everyone. You are welcome to another episode of Talking Legal with Templars. My name is Ifure Udofa, and with me today is Ina Ali. Today, we are exploring an interesting topic, and which is the energy question, is CNG the answer? Welcome, thank, Ina. Thank you very much for having me. Today, we are exploring a topic that has become a buzzword in the wider Nigerian society and especially in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. And that is about CNG. The energy question is CNG the answer. Um, in our recently, we have seen a lot of noise, buzz. Mm -hmm. The media is awash mm -hmm. with so much conversations relating to CNG, how it is the new fuel. What's CNG exactly and how does CNG differ from our traditional sources which we have become used to, which is PMS and diesel? That's a very interesting question and a very big buzzword currently in the Nigerian landscape. So CNG basically means compressed natural gas, right? Um, it's a sustainable and versatile alternative to PMS, petrol and diesel. Now, when you say sustainable and versatile what do i mean well what i mean is that cng is clean burning it's odorless it's colorless and it has a lower density compared to petrol and diesel right so cost of it is um low it's one fifth the cost approximately actually one fifth the cost of petrol i guess the next question is in the midst of all of the excitement about cng mm -hmm. i mean the obvious next question is what is the current regulatory framework okay. for CNG in Nigeria. Okay, that's very interesting, actually. So as it is, let me start from a granular level. We have um, two regulators um, within the energy and natural resource space in Nigeria. We have the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, or mm -hmm. the Commission. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Nigerian Midstream Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, authority. Yeah. NMDPRA or authority, mm -hmm. right? So, in terms of raw gas as it stands, it's the NUPRC that has oversight function. Yeah. Now, in terms of um, gas across the midstream and downstream sector, it's the authority that handles that. So, naturally, compressed natural gas, which is a derivation or a processed form of gas is um, regulated by the authority. Yeah. Currently, as it stands, we have um, a work in progress within the Nigerian landscape of a regulatory framework or enhanced regulatory framework of the CNG across the whole value chain. So particularly, the, there seems to be the one which, you know, every time you hear about CNG is almost always in mm -hmm. collaboration or mm -hmm. in association with PCNGI. Yes. That's the Presidential CNG Initiative, I yes, believe. Yes, exactly. Um, and that seems to be... So can we, can we qualify the PCNGI as mm -hmm. a special regulator for CNG as it is today? I wouldn't call it a regulator, actually. So the PCNGI was set up by the president, I think, around August um, 2023. Mm -hmm. So this um, initiative, right, the PCNGI, was created out of a need to sensitize Nigerians to encourage investors, encourage talent, because part of their mandate is to train Nigerians across the whole value chain, right, and to encourage the use of CNG as an alternative cleaner, cheaper, efficient fuel use within our transportation Fantastic. network. Also, with regard to um, the PCNGI encouraging the use of CNG across the transportation network and mm -hmm. the value chain, um, may I also add that a number of states right, have rolled out CNG-powered vehicles right cng powered mass transit systems the likes of um, lagos state the likes of ogun state the fct abuja right. have rolled out interstate mass transit systems powered by the cng, CNG. so it's it's very encouraging that it's a work in progress but it's very encouraging to see that there are a number of states already tapping into it as far back as 2023 right right, right. bringing in this um, 
whole in, CNG initiative, initiative to life, to life. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, I guess like you've said, work in progress. Mm -hmm. We will continue to see how because I think for me, what what is probably very exciting about this is mm -hmm. how it impacts every aspect of the economy and of the yes. policy. Yes. You are seeing efforts which relate to energy creation of energy security yes. or enhancing energy security. Yes. We are looking at um, consideration, environmental considerations, mm -hmm. you know, and also we are looking at creation of employment mm -hmm. and also investment opportunities as well for mm -hmm. what has become uh, quite scarce mm -hmm. foreign direct investments. Yeah. Yes. So besides the PCNGI, is there any other regulatory framework we should be aware of in terms of governing or overseeing CNG in Nigeria today? Yes, actually, the National Gas Policy of 2017 is a very good starting point. Now, this um, aims to develop Nigeria's gas production infrastructure and supply chain while establishing both domestic and international wholesale gas market. Um, this gas policy, National Gas Policy 2017, sets strategies for natural gas investors and links the gas sector to the power sector, to agriculture and other industrial sectors. That's the starting point. Now, the key goal there is to implement a gas resource management plan. So this, supporting this, we have the Nigerian Gas Flare mm -hmm. Commercialization Program, program yeah. which promotes converting flared gas into marketable products, right? Previously, Nigeria flared a lot of gas, right? And we've come a long way from that. And... This um, commercialization program is one of the policy programs, right, or regulatory programs that the government is trying to do to promote the use of gas. Commercialization of gas. Exactly. Yeah. And into marketable products mm -hmm. such as the CNG yeah. that we are focused on right now. Yeah. Um, this initiative aligns with Nigeria's energy transition plan, which, as you may be aware of, it has a net zero target of 2060. 2060. Yeah. And we as a country, Nigeria, has been promoting gas as a transition fuel due to our abundant resources. In addition to other renewable energy sources such as hydro, solar, mm -hmm. um, and the likes of it. Yeah. So um, just to piggyback on a point you just mentioned, which is the energy transition plan, mm -hmm. The government has shown some commitment to energy transition. Um, what are your thoughts on the plan? And do you think that government has actually put its back really towards attaining all of the very interesting targets that have been set in the plan and also our international commitments as well? Definitely, definitely. Actually, Nigeria has very strong commitments so far on Nigeria's energy transition plan, mm -hmm. which is a multi-pronged, data-driven, homegrown strategy launched in August 2022, right? It's a comprehensive strategy that addresses energy poverty and climate change. And one of the strategies in the energy transition plan is the use of cleaner energy energy options such as the CNG. Right. Um, and I mean, these are all within the plan, but in terms of practical approach, do you think that we have made significant progress in terms of the plan? I would like to believe based on ba backed um, data, data that we have made noticeable improvements within our energy transition plan and the direction in which the country is going now, such as clean cooking, mm -hmm. the use of gas, right? LPG, LPG yeah. as a cleaner alternative to fire firewood or, or the use of kerosene or coal. Yeah. Now, why do we even use example clean cooking, right? The use of firewood, the use of kerosene for cooking has health implications in the long run mm -hmm. has environmental impact implications in the long run but there's still a very long way to go so back to cng as a focus topic mm -hmm. um is it novel 
um and which is really are we doing something which hasn't been done anywhere else if it has are there other countries which have um a more developed i guess cng framework and utilization and what are probably some lessons we can learn from what these other countries have done um that's actually a very interesting question and it's very important for us to mention that even in nigeria the use of cng is not 100 percent novel right for a few years now we've had a number of um trucks right a number of large-scale vehicles carrying good skids exactly that have been used in Nigeria mm -hmm. for a few years now. We have about maybe in Europe alone about 37 countries that have been using CNG as a fuel uh, as a fuel source. There are countries such as Egypt, right, and India that have adopted CNG as an alternative fuel source within their transportation network. Mm -hmm. India, for example, has gone extremely far in terms of their CNG usage. They produce the cylinders there. Mm. They have the right skilled labor force to refit existing vehicles that will be able to take in those CNG cylinders, yeah. right? And provide a cleaner energy source and provide a cleaner air quality. Mm -hmm. Nigeria can learn a lot from the likes of India, Egypt, having similar background to and Nigeria. Demography. Yes, exactly. Then the last question would probably will be to investors and investments within the sector. What do you think are prospects for any persons who are looking to develop or deploy capital towards the CNG sector in whatever form. And this could be whether in terms of CNG processing mm -hmm. or in terms of distribution mm -hmm. or even in terms of, you know, um, retrofitting mm -hmm. existing vehicles to become mm -hmm. CNG um, compliant or mm -hmm. to be able to use mm -hmm. CNG as their fuel source. What do you think are prospects for those kind of entities or persons who want to... Um, I, I think Nigeria has a very large prospect of enticing investors within and outside the country mm. to come in and invest in the whole CNG value chain. Mm -hmm. a typical example would be in the production of the CNG cylinders, mm -hmm. set up factories that would be able to produce those cylinders. That's one. We also have opportunities for investors to invest in CNG stations yeah. or to enhance existing petrol stations with more terminals that cater to CNG. Yeah. I understand currently there are a number of stations in Nigeria that have CNG, uh, CNG terminals That's there. Correct. So investors can look into that aspect of the value chain to invest there. There is also the aspect of um, skill development, manpower development, training of our millions of youths in CNG conversion. Mm -hmm. The prospects are massive. The horizon is bright. Yes, it's, it's such a teaming industry. And I'm very excited to see how the CNG landscape would transform within the next four years, within the next five years, to see how far we've come. So, yes, and there are a number of investment incentives that the government has started or has been promoting for investors to come in. Mm -hmm. Typical example would be the pioneer status. Right. There is an incentive for investors to come in in that space to apply for a pioneer status exemption. Mm -hmm. The initial exemption is for a period of three years, renewable for a further two years. That's that's a huge yeah. incentive. And, and that's a tax exempt yes, status. It, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's a five year cumulative tax free yeah. um, period. Yeah. Initial three years, and then we have two years. And then we also have accelerated capital allowance, mm -hmm. right? And then you also have the option of tax-free dividends during the tax-free period. 
massive massive incentives for investors to consider and also there is the vat value added tax modification order of 2024 what that modification order does is that it provides exemptions to equipment and other aspects being used within the cng value chain yeah. so under the value added tax um, vat modification order of 2024 it provides for incentives across the value chain by exempting goods services and equipment used across the cng value, value chain. chain there are also other incentives that are numerous to mention yeah here that investors can tap into to go into the whole cng space the future is bright it's very excited actually Indeed. i'm actually looking forward to Indeed. seeing what Indeed. what's on offer over the next few years yes thank you very much ina this has been a very enlightening and insightful episode um thank you to our listeners for joining us and for being with us until the next episode of talking legal thank you thank you very much